Hello everyone, it's Miss Patterson here. Um, I miss you all so, so, so much, and I was really excited for this opportunity to teach you guys your math lesson today on uh, graphing with the coordinate systems. Um, it's very possible that some of you guys already have prior experience with this, um, but you by no means need to be an expert for our lesson today. We are starting on ground level zero. So um, I'm going to be doing a read aloud for you all uh, with this book called The Fly on the Ceiling, A Math Myth by Dr. Julie Glass. And it's a super good book. It's going to help us with understanding the use of coordinate systems as well as a funny story that um, is not actually the origins of how it came to be, but it's funny to think about if it started that way. Um, we actually read this book in my math class at UNCW and all of us really enjoyed it, so I hope you guys like it as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. This is the story of a guy who lived a long time ago. He lived in France. He was a French guy, so he had a French name. His name was René Descartes. This may sound like a funny name to you, but in France it is perfectly normal. René was a philosopher. A philosopher is someone who thinks about why things are the way that they are. René was a great philosopher. Many of his ideas are still famous today. I think, therefore I am. I think. But even though René was a great philosopher, he did have one problem. He was messy. This problem started out small, but it got bigger and bigger. The funny thing was, René did not know he had a problem until... He started to lose things. His notebook, his favorite hat, his book about stars, his inkwell. Then he found the inkwell. Now René knew he had a problem. This must stop, René said to himself. He decided to take a walk and try to think of a solution to his problem. It took him a moment to find his coat, his hat, and the front door. René went to his favorite bakery to buy, to buy a fresh loaf of bread. Then he headed to his favorite place to think, the banks of the River Seine. René ate some of the bread while he walked. He looked at the water and wondered how he could keep better track of his things. Night fell and René was still thinking. He was thinking so hard that he didn't look where he was going. Splash! Into the Seine went René Descartes. When he was fished out of the water, he was cold and wet, and his bread was soggy. René walked home. By the time he got there, he was sneezing and wheezing. He crawled into bed and fell fast asleep. The next morning, René still felt dreadful. Not only that, but he couldn't find a handkerchief, or an extra blanket, or the logs to make a fire. He couldn't even find his soggy bread, which should have dried out by then. René crawled sadly back into bed. He stared at the ceiling. The ceiling was the only place in the room that wasn't messy. René wished that he lived on the neat ceiling instead of on the messy floor. Just then, he noticed a fly on the ceiling. The fly flew off and landed near one corner. Then it flew off and landed in another corner. Then it landed above René's toes. Then it stopped right over René's head. René started to think. He wondered if the fly ever landed in the same place twice. This might seem like a weird thing to think about, but René was a philosopher, so it was normal for him. I need to record where the fly lands so I can know how many times it lands in the same place, he thought. But how can I do that? René thought and thought. Suddenly, he had a brilliant idea. It was so brilliant that he jumped out of bed to do a jig. He knew how to record exactly where the fly landed on the ceiling. 
Renee took a piece of charcoal from the fire. Then he climbed up on a chair and started drawing lines on the ceilings. Don't try this at home. Your parents will not like it. First, Rene drew lines from the north wall to the south wall. Next, he drew lines from one side to the other. Then, he numbered the lines along two of the walls. After that, he got back into bed. So now we're starting to see the coordinate system um, he created. Rene watched the fly on the ceiling. When it landed, he, he counted the lines over to that spot. He wrote down the number of lines, two. So the number of lines over, two, to the fly. Then he counted the lines up to that spot. He wrote down the number. So up to the fly, there's five. Together, the two numbers, two and five, told him exactly where the fly was. The numbers two and five are called coordinates. The first coordinate, two, measures how far away the fly is from the left side. The second coordinate, five, measures how far away the fly is from the bottom wall. Rene spent the whole morning watching the fly and sneezing. If you had gone to visit him, he might have said, the fly is six over, three up. So six over, three up. Or the fly is four over, seven up. So four over, seven up. Or the fly is eight over, one up. So then we got eight and then one. Every spot on the ceiling had its own set of coordinates. Recording the coordinates of the fly over and over again gave Rene another brilliant idea. Maybe he could keep track of his stuff the same way he kept track of the fly. It would be even easier because a hat can't get up and fly away. Rene jumped out of bed again. He pushed everything into the kitchen. Now the floor of his room was as clean as his ceiling, but he couldn't draw the grid on the floor with charcoal. It would rub off too soon. Rene went next door to see if his neighbor had any paint. What luck! His neighbor was a painter. Rene and the painter painted a grid on Rene's floor. Then they went to the bakery to buy bread. By the time they got back, the paint had dried. The painter helped Rene put his things in place on the grid. They found Rene's hat, his star book, his quill pins, his old boots, his journal from when he was 10, and many other things that Rene didn't even know were missing. On a chart, Rene carefully recorded where everything went. Voila! And then you can see this list right here with all of his things listed in the coordinates that they can be found. After that, Renee's home was never messy again. Well, hardly ever. Because he can still trip on things. Renee's system caught on around the world. It was named the Cartesian Coordinate System. And Cartesian comes from Renee's last name, Descartes. Today, people still use the Cartesian coordinate system in many different ways. So we've got a globe right here with coordinates. We've got a person with some statistics and records. And then we've got a map right here. And then there's an author's note, and it says, Okay, so maybe Rene Descartes wasn't really messy, and maybe he didn't really fall into the Seine or draw lines on his ceiling. But even if nobody knows exactly how he did it, it is a fact that Rene Descartes made the Cartesian coordinate system very popular. And he was a darn good philosopher, too.
So we know from the title, since it's the fly on the ceiling, a math myth, that this is a myth. Um, it didn't actually happen, but it's really cool to think that that could have been the reason that um, he created it or something similar. Um, but it's a really good story. I hope you enjoyed it. I've got three questions on my Google Slides that I would like for you to answer to make sure that you understood everything from the book. So go ahead and do that now.